In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start live streaming great high quality video productions with the new Blackmagic Designs ATEM Mini. Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. I'm really excited about the ATEM Mini from Blackmagic Designs because this switcher is going to become the best way for a lot of people to get started with live streaming. Or if you're currently streaming with one camera, this is a great way to start a multi-camera production. For $300, it's a full-featured four-input video switcher, which that in itself would have made for a great product. But they've also included a video interface, which lets you connect the switcher directly to the computer and send the switcher's output into the computer without needing any other device in between. So you can see why I'm excited this one device packs in a whole lot of capabilities at an amazing price point that is going to be perfect for churches starting out on a budget. Because I think this switcher is going to start showing up in so many churches, I'm going to do a whole series of videos about it. In addition to this video, we'll talk about how to get audio into it from your audio mixer, how to set up a multi-camera shoot, and connect cameras that are further away than HDMI cables can run, and also how to bring your lyrics in from a projection computer and overlay that over your video. So if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those videos. In this video, I'm going to start with the basics, how to configure the switcher, connect it to our computer and begin live streaming using OBS software. But first, let's just take a look at this thing and see what it can do. On the back, it's got four HDMI inputs, so you can connect four cameras or three cameras and a computer, however you want to use those four HDMI inputs. It has two auxiliary mic inputs on 8th inch connectors, and these can be switched in the configuration software between mic and line level. So this is where you'd bring in sound from an audio mixer. It has an HDMI out, and as we'll see in a minute, this output can be used in a couple of different ways. And then finally, what really is its main program output is the webcam out, which is a USB 3 port that you can use to connect the switcher to your computer. And one of the nice improvements that Blackmagic Designs has made to this switcher is that we can now also control the switcher using the ATEM control software through the USB connection without having to set up the switcher on a network, which for reducing the complexity of getting the switcher up and running is a nice improvement. It still does have the network port, so if you want, you could control it over a network or have multiple people working on the switcher at the same time. On the front panel, the first thing you'll notice are the four big buttons to select your four inputs. And there are two ways to operate the buttons on the switcher. The default is what they call cut bus. And in this mode, when you push one of the four input buttons, the switcher will take that camera live on the program output with either a cut or a fade transition, depending which one is selected. In this mode, you could use the HDMI output on the back as a program output, and you select what is routed to the HDMI output in the control software. At the top is an output menu where you select what the HDMI output will show. The other mode that the switcher can operate in is called Program Preview, and you switch to this mode by running the ATEM setup software, which is a separate program from the control software, but it was installed when you installed the control software. And if you are familiar with any of the other ATEM switchers, this is the normal place where you would configure the switcher's IP address. But with the Mini, there is also this section for panel settings, and here we can switch to Program Preview. In this mode, route the preview bus to the HDMI output, and when I press an input button, it turns green, and I'm going to see that input on the HDMI output but it's not live on the program out until I press the take or auto button to actually transition that input to the program output. So while the Mini doesn't have a multi-view output like the other ATEMs, it does have a way to see your camera feed before you take it live. And on that note, in my future video about setting up a multi-camera system with this switcher, I'm going to talk about some ways to overcome not having a multi-view output. I think if having a multi-view output is really a requirement for your environment, then you just need to get the bigger brother, the ATEM TVS switcher. But at a $300 price point for the switcher, I'm not going to complain. The rest of the buttons, these smaller buttons above the big input buttons, control audio. And this switcher pretty much internally has all the capabilities of the ATEM TVS as far as an upstream keyer for Luma and chroma keying and a downstream keyer for linear keying that we can use to overlay lyrics on our video. And we'll talk about some of those features in a future video as well. 
I hope that you can begin to see that this one device with both a four input video switcher and a video interface built in is gonna be a great way for a lot of churches to start video production and live streaming. So right now to finish out this video, let's talk about how I would use this switcher to send video to something like Facebook Live. The first thing you'll need to do is download and install the ATEM control software from the Blackmagic Designs website. Once you have that installed, for live streaming, you're also gonna need OBS. So download and install that. When you first connect the switcher to your computer, I'm using this lightning to USB cable to connect it to my PC, which is a little bit of an unusual cable. I've got a link to it down in the description of this video, along with links to all the equipment I'm using here. When you first connect it and launch the ATEM control software, it may tell you that you need to update the firmware. Go ahead and do that, and then you should be presented with the ATEM software control program, just like you see with any of the full-size ATEM switchers. Click the gear icon in the bottom left corner to bring up the settings menu, and let's talk about setting the video standard. With previous ATEM switchers, we had to be very careful what video standard we chose and be sure that all the devices we connected to the switcher matched this video standard. Otherwise, we wouldn't get an image from an input. But with the Mini, it scales all the inputs to whatever video standard you set here. So with the ATEM Mini, I recommend setting the video standard with an eye towards your output destination. Since in most cases, we are gonna be using this for live streaming on the web. I'm gonna save my computer a little bit of encoding work and set the output here to 1080p 30. So at least the switcher is gonna drop the frame rate down for me from the 1080p 60 that's coming in from my cameras. And OBS, our encoder for streaming, won't have to do that. The video from the switcher shows up on your computer like we connected a USB webcam. So when we plug in the USB cable, there are no drivers to install. It will just show up on your computer as a USB video device. To take that video and live stream it, we'll open up OBS and I'll add a scene. I'll call it live video and then add a source to the scene and I'm gonna select video capture device. Give it a name, I'll call it ATEM Mini and then in the properties dialog, I'm going to select USB video device. That's how the ATEM's video input shows up on your computer. Then before I click OK, this is a quirk of OBS. I'm not exactly sure why we have to do this, but this happens with just about any video interface I've used. You need to scroll to the bottom and check Use Custom Audio Device. And then in the dropdown that appears, select this device, USB Video Device. And now when we click OK, we've got the video from the ATEM, as well as the audio from the ATEM coming into OBS. I can switch cameras on the ATEM, and of course we see the output video from the ATEM here in OBS. One trick I like to do in OBS for audio is in the audio mixer, I'll mute all the other audio sources that show up so I can be sure that I'm getting audio only from the device that I want. And not for instance, be adding in the sound from the microphone built into my laptop by accident. Now let's configure OBS for live streaming to Facebook Live. Click the settings button and then click the stream page and for service, select Facebook Live. And now we need to enter our stream key. You need to get this from your Facebook account. So in a browser, we'll go to Facebook and select live video. Okay, let me stop right here. I get a lot of questions on my YouTube channel and people who contact me through chat on Facebook and usually because they're having some sort of problem with their live stream. And I can't even count how many times what I'm about to show you is the problem that people are having. Please understand there are two options here, camera and connect, and they are very different. To use OBS, you have to select connect, and this is where we'll get our stream key and all the information to enter into OBS, and where we'll actually click go live to get our stream online. But what a lot of people do is stay on the camera side, and because the A10 Mini shows up on your computer as a webcam device, you can select it right here, USB video device, and we've got the input from the switcher going into Facebook. The problem is when you do this, you've completely bypassed OBS, and now Facebook and your browser are acting as the encoder, and they will send whatever video quality, resolution, and bitrate that they like to Facebook for your stream and you'll get less than desirable results. So be sure you're on the Connect tab. 
I like to check use a persistent key so that each time I stream I don't have to copy a new key into OBS. It will stay the same. Copy this key and paste that back into OBS. Now I'm going to quickly walk you through how I set up OBS for live streaming to Facebook. If you want more explanation about why I'm doing some of these things, I have a video about optimizing OBS for live streaming. I'll link that down in the description of this video. In the video tab, leave base canvas as 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution coming in from the switcher. And I'm going to set the output resolution to 1280 by 720 for Facebook. Set the frames per second to 30. Then on the output tab, select advance for the output mode. And in the streaming tab, I'm going to select the NVIDIA NVENC encoder since I have a pretty powerful NVIDIA graphics card in this computer. Rate control leave as CBR and I'll start a bit rate of 2500. The rest here you can leave at the defaults. On the audio tab, track one I'll set to 128. That's a requirement for Facebook. I try and match Facebook's requirements, not because they won't accept your video if a few of these settings are a little bit off, but what happens is then Facebook will do the conversion to get your video to match their requirements. And that usually leads to less than stellar results. So I try and send the best quality feed I can that meets the requirements. Click OK, and now I'm ready to click Start Streaming in OBS. Back in my browser, I should see my stream show up. And now one final step, all I have to do is click Go Live here in the browser, and my stream will be live on Facebook. A few quick ways that you can check the health of your stream. These statistics down here that Facebook provides are a good way to verify that what you are sending is actually getting through. 2.5 megabits per second, 128 kbps for audio, and 30 frames per second. This all looks good. Back in OBS, if I click the View menu and Stats, this opens a menu where I can also get a good idea on the health of my stream. The top part shows me if my computer is keeping up, frames missed due to rendering or encoding lag. If I see a percentage here, that would indicate that my computer isn't up to the task of live streaming at these settings. And down below here, if you see any dropped frames from the network, that would indicate that your internet connection doesn't have the bandwidth to stream at the settings you're using. And that's it. You've got your A10 Mini online and streaming. Be sure and subscribe to my channel for more videos where I'm going to go into more specifics about using this switcher for live production. Until next time, bye.